Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining me today to discuss a topic of great concern, water pollution. When we see water that is colorless and odorless, we can feel that the water comes from a safe source. But what if it wasn't? What if it comes from a source like this? Then the statistical will actually say that half of you will now suffering with an illness. Well, depends on what kind of pollutants that you are being exposed to. Surely, most of us have heard about the Kinky River and Klang River pollution issues and wondered what exactly are the menacing pollutants haunting these once glistering waters. As I speak, the statistics still show that 3 out of 10 people in the world still lack access to the safely managed drinking water services. From plastic in our ocean to chemicals in our drinking water, the effect of water pollution are far-reaching and alarming. It is time that we take a closer look at this problem and consider what step we can take to address it. So let's begin. Our study findings indicating potentially toxic levels of pharmaceutical pollutants in over a quarter of the world's river and the presence of some commonly used but not commonly known pollutants garnered widespread attention. While other pollutions may steal the headlines the threat of the drugs pollution is quietly sneaking up as a major policy concern. With the harmful and toxic effect on the environment, especially through freshwater sources like rivers, these aquatic micropollutants are causing serious damage. The primary environmental threat posed by birth control pills, the most widespread of drug pollutants found in freshwater sources, where the active pharmaceutical ingredient is known as synthetic estrogen or EE2, which scientific studies have linked to the rise in she-male fish population. The presence and concentrations of pollutants in the ecosystem have been increasingly year after year since the first industrial revolution due to the synthesis and also creations of the chemical for industrial, agricultural, and domestic use. Over 100,000 new chemicals have been created for human use in which only less than 10% of them having their potential risk fully understood, with 10 of 1,000 new chemicals estimated to be produced each year. The continuous exposure to the chemical poses a significant risk, as it can result in the emergence of several dangerous and often fatal diseases. One example is Minamata disease, caused by mercury pollution released into the water by industrial effluents, which eventually accumulates in the marine food chain. This pollution-related health damage was first detected in 1956 around Minamata Bay in Japan, almost 40 years after the initial release. Another example is Itai Itai disease, also known as It Hurt, It Hurt disease, caused by exposure to cadmium resulting from human activity related to industrialization. This condition was first identified in Japan during the 1960s. The identifications of emerging chemicals of concern, CEC in water, particularly through problem tree analysis, is hindered by a lack of awareness, ineffective management and treatment strategies and insufficient legal regulation in addressing emerging chemicals of concern in water may lead to ecosystem threats, increase illness and negatively impact the overall health of individuals, particularly low-income families in the B40 category, animals and of course the environment. So what is CEC? There are chemicals of microorganisms found in the environment where they don't belong both synthetic and natural, that can cause harm even at low level, especially when found in water. One of the biggest concerns is a type of chemical called endocrine disrupting compound, or EDC, which are commonly found in things we use every day like medicine, pesticides, and personal care products. The presence of the chemicals in our drinking water, especially tap water, poses an additional and chemical risk to the human health. These chemicals of emerging concerns have been linked to various health issues, and exposure through drinking water is a major pathway. As we examine the existing drinking water regulation, 
we must acknowledge the current drinking water regulations only cover basic quality parameters. And a recent study by the World Health Organization, WHO, shows that the guidelines for CEC in drinking water are insufficient and almost missing. As such, we need to expand our focus on safety and demand higher standard and greater transparency and accountability in our drinking water regulation to protect ourselves and our loved ones from potential head risks posed by this particular CEC. As previously mentioned, our country is not exempt from the issue at hand. Despite using parameters adapted from the WHO and the US EPA, CEC are not being specifically addressed in Malaysia. This underscores the need of greater attention to be given and the invisible emerging pollutants and their visible impact on public health and the environment. To provide some clearer picture on this alarming issue, our global collaborative study looked at 258 rivers across the globe, including the Thames in London and Amazon in Brazil, as well as Langat in Malaysia, to measure the presence of 61 pharmaceuticals such as metformin and also caffeine. With more than 128,000 data points, we found that the pharmaceutical pollution is contaminating water on every continent. With the most polluted continents and regions of the world being researched, the least such as Sub-Saharan Africa, South America, and part of the Southern Asia. There are strong correlation between the socioeconomic status of a country and higher pollutions of pharmaceutical in its rivers, with lower middle income nations being the most polluted. High level of pharmaceutical pollutions were most positively associated with the regions of high median age as well as high local unemployment and poverty rates. Activity most associated with the highest level of pharmaceutical pollution included rubbish dumping along the river banks, inadequate wastewater infrastructure and pharmaceutical manufacturing. My hydrochemistry laboratory at UPM recently conducted a local study on the occurrence of EDC in a drinking water supply system and the associated risks. The findings were concerning. A total of 14 multi-class EDC were detected in the drinking water supply system here in Malaysia. Of particularly concern was bisphenol A, a chemical commonly used in the productions of polycarbonate plastics, which was found to be the highest detected EDC in tap water at over 66 nanogram per liter in all samples collected. This was followed by diclofenac, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug used to treat pain and inflammations. Have you ever wondered how these particular chemicals that were originally intended to be safe and beneficial for medical purposes have now become enemies to our ecosystem? The answer lies in our domestic demand for these chemicals, which ultimately end up polluting our waters. The existing wastewater treatment system is not equipped to remove these emerging contaminants, which are detected at extremely low concentration, and as a result, they are released back into our environment and accumulate in our food chain. We often think of pollution as something that comes from the factories or industrial plants, but did you know that some of the most harmful pollutants are found right in our homes? Yes. You heard me right. We are not just talking about the chemicals in the medicine we take, but also in our children's toys, plastic drinking bottles, cleaning products, flame retardants, and even thermal cash register receipt. Why we should care about CEC? Well, they are ubiquitous, even found in the deepest part of the ocean. What's alarming is that even low doses of CEC can cause harm, and traditional risk assessment method often miss their effect on hormone or potential delayed effect that can occur years after exposure. Compounding the issue, testing methods are insufficient, meaning we may be overlooking the irreversible health damage they cause, which potential impact on multiple generations. Exposure of the CEC can harm people of any age, prenatal development, childhood, adolescence, adulthood, and old age are more vulnerable to exposure. Placental exposure can harm fetuses, 
while breast milk formula food can harm infant and children. Contaminated drinking water, food and personal care products can harm adolescents and adults. Exposure to CEC can accumulate as we age, which can have long-term health consequences. The health impact of the CEC can differ depending on exposure time, durations, and individual susceptibility. CEC has been associated with age-dependent diseases, such as developmental and behavioral problems in children from exposure to the BPA and phentalates, hormonal issue and increased risk of certain cancers from exposure to flame retardants and cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, neurological disorder in older adults from exposure to PCBs and dioxin. This association emphasized the need to reduce exposure to CEC throughout the lifespan to protect the human health. We have known for over two decades now that the CEC make their way into the aquatic environment where they may affect the aquatic organisms such as fish, interbreeds, and also algae, biology of the living things. The effect of CEC on aquatic organism can vary depending on the specific chemical and the level of exposure. Some chemicals can cause reproductive and developmental abnormalities, hormonal imbalance, and behavioral change in aquatic organisms. Additionally, exposure to CEC can affect the overall health and functioning of the aquatic ecosystem, leading to change in a species composition, food web, and nutrient cycling. Biodiversity loss is another potential consequence of CEC exposure in aquatic ecosystem. The effect of CEC can lead to declines in populations of sensitive species and alter the competitiveness of balance between the ecosystem and also the interaction. This loss of biodiversity can have cascading effect on ecosystem functioning, including the provisions of important ecosystem services, such as clean water and food production. With all negative impact of CEC pollution in the environment, particularly water, it is very important to encourage proper disposal of pharmaceutical and personal care products. When these products are disposed improperly, such as by flushing them down to the toilet or throwing them in the trash, they can end up in landfills or enter the water supply, which later end up back in our body. The presence of CEC in the environment has opened up the need for the development and also the method of detection to quantify the CEC in the environment. This method will help us to make risk assessment and the environment and the public health to be better. The output of this assessment will further become a significant input in the process of rectifying policies and regulations for the sake of one health. In addition, it will encourage the manufacturers to produce environmental-friendly products, promoting sustainable practices that are vital for the health of our planet and living beings. Our team emphasizes the concept of the from sources to the solution which means we look at the sources of the problem and work towards the finding a solution to the problem by minimizing any risk to the human health and also the environment. To do this, we adopt a multidisciplinary approach that involves various fields of study, including the chemistry, biology, environmental science, and also the policy. We start by identifying the sources of CEC in the environment and evaluating the potential risk to the human health and also the ecosystem. We then develop the analytical methods to detect and to quantify these contaminants in the environment. Once we have a better understanding of the extent of the problem, we work towards finding solutions to reduce the release of CEC into the environment and to remediate them. We must act swiftly and diligently to identify and address the presence of CEC in our water sources in order to ensure the health and safety of our citizens. This requires a concentrated effort from all stakeholders, including policymakers, researchers, and also the public. To put it in the context, what we need to understand, the presence of EDC in the environment, commonly in the mixture, is more toxic than a single compound due to the combined effect of the multi-residues, 
and can lead to a significant health risk through long-term exposure via ineffective treatment technology and dietary intake, thus highlighting the need for strong regulatory effort to address the adverse impact and knowledge gap. Public awareness and political obligations are necessary for preventive and intervention action to ensure the security and sustainability of water resources, where water treatment facilities serve as the final security measure to protect human from exposure to the chemical with risk perception being potentially mediating influence in managing the risk. Thank you.